Alright, so to get started very quickly with particle systems, we're going to actually use one of Unity's default particle systems that comes with it. So we're going to import this as a package. So let's go ahead and right click um, on our assets folder and we're going to import package. And you'll see particle systems below environment. Go ahead and click on that and we want to get rid of anything that comes with the editor. Um, let's bring in uh, let's turn off the cross-platform and, and pull that down. Particle systems and materials, we'll need that. Um, I really don't need like the afterburner or anything like that. If you want to play around with these particle systems, you're more than welcome to. Um, but I would really uh, prefer, let's go ahead and just say none on this. I would really prefer to just bring in the dust storm, because that's fitting for this. And then, uh, let's take a look. Anything else? I don't need that. Um, bring in the particle system guidelines just in case you want to take a look through that. The prefabs, I need the dust storm itself, but everything else I really don't need. If you want to bring those in, you're more than welcome to. I do want to bring in all the shaders that go along with that, as well as um, the textures that I need for this. I'm pretty sure this is using the cloud white but I'm not absolutely positive on that, so I'll just bring in those textures. Not a big deal. And then the utilities, I don't need those. So let's go ahead and import. This should just take just a second. And then you'll find the uh, particle system we're looking for inside of our prefabs folder. And all you have to do at this point is just left click and drag that into the scene. Now once we bring that into the scene, you can start to see this dust kind of rolling through. And we can play around with this. Now the first thing that I want to do is I want to center this up on my level. So I need to go to my position and I'm going to type in 125 on my X and 125 on my Z. And that will center it up on the level. Remember the size of our level is 250 by 250. Now the Y, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll set this to 5 just so that way it's just above the surface of um, our terrain here. Then we need to expand it out because, as you, as you can see, there's a, a noticeable edge. So I need to bring that out. So what we need to do here is we need to go into the particle system component and we need to adjust the shape of this. Okay, So the shape is going to give you options as to what shape it's using. In this case, it's a box. The box in the X direction is set to 100, so we're going to set it to 250. And then we have the Z direction, which we'll set to 250 as well. If you want to give that some thickness, you can do so, but this will work just fine. Okay. Now you'll notice that the particle system is constantly um, updating and simulating. You can stop that at any time that you want to. You could also hit simulate, and if you wanted to quit animating, and you just want to be able to see the particles themselves, hit pause instead. So you can see the particles are staying. Alright, now one th thing to consider really quickly, if you want to create a brand new particle system, um, you need to create an empty game object. So let's say that you don't want to use this. Create an empty game object and call it whatever the particle system is supposed to be. So let's say that this is um, Sparks or something like that. You would create the empty game object, go ahead and position it at 0, 0, 0, so that way it's easy to find. And then you're going to add a component to this, and it's going to be an effects component and particle system. And so now you can see that we have the default behavior of a particle system. Then what you would do is you would come into these modules, and you would start to adjust the parameters in each module. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this old Sparks. Um, out of here. Now if you want to save this particle system all you would need to do is go ahead and left click and drag it into one of your prefabs folder or if you have a particle system folder that you created just left click and drag it from the hierarchy into that folder and it will create a prefab that you can use over and over and over again. Okay, Let me go ahead and just delete this out. Alright, so with our dust storm um, let's take a look at some of these modules. The very top module is going to um, be the best place to start to get your um, base behavior. So the duration is going to tell us how long this uh, particle system will 
continue. So it's going to last for five seconds. Now right now it's set to looping and so it's going to continue to play or simulate over and over again. So once it gets to five seconds it restarts at zero and then starts that whole process over again. Pre-warm is turned off, but usually if you turn that on, what that means is that the particle system is going to be going from the very beginning. So for us, I'm going to set this to pre-warm, because whenever I play my game, um, I want that to play. So I'm going to hit stop and then simulate, and you can see the particle systems are there automatically, and then they begin to roll. Okay. Um, let's hit pause real quick. Let's go on down. You can start a delay for this but you need to have pre-warm turned off in order to have a delay. So if you want a particle system to wait a certain amount of time before it begins simulating, um, you can do that. Uh, the lifetime itself. So each particle has a life. And um, you can see that each particle that is emitted from this has a life of five seconds. You have a speed as well. So you have a start speed and then you have an end speed. And well, I shouldn't say that, not a start and an end, but a range on its speed. So the start speed for each particle could be between 2 and 4. It's just random. Now, if you want it to be constant, you would set this to 2 and 2, okay, or whatever number you want. Same thing for the size. There is a random value between 15 and 25 that's being generated for each particle that is emitted from this particle emitter. And then you also have a rotation. Each particle that starts out can uh, rotate from 0 to 360, okay? And that's its starting rotation. So whenever the particle emits out, it's not going to have the same pattern as another particle or the same rotation as another particle in the uh, same emitter itself, okay? So it creates some randomness. Then we have our start color, and the, the color for this is going to be anywhere between this darker gray and a lighter gray, and so you get a variation in that. Um, gravity modifier, if you want gravity on your particles, so like sparks. Um, whenever sparks fly up into the air, they do fall and then they die off. So if you want gravity in that, you can do so. Um, let's go ahead and move on to something that's a little more prominent instead of getting into all of these options. Uh, play on awake is going to be very important for you because it tells the engine to begin playing this particle system as soon as the game starts. Okay. Um, Max particles. How many particles do you want in your scene at one time? You can give it a max of 1,000. Um, you can bump it up to 2,000 if you like, and you can make that dust even thicker. Just be aware that each particle that is emitted has to be drawn. And so particles can be very expensive, so we want to keep this at around 1,000. All right, so that is the basic... Um, settings for this module. Um, so let's go ahead and move on into emission. Now emission is going to determine the rate in which each particle is emitted. So under the rate we have a hundred particles being emitted over time. Okay. Um, if you increase that um, you'll get more and more particles in this but it will never go over the max that is allowed in the scene at one time. Okay, so this is kind of your cap, if you will. You could also add bursts to a particle system. So if you have something like fireworks and you have um, you know, a certain amount of time and then the particles are supposed to just kind of burst out at a certain time and you want so many particles to burst out, you can set that here. Um, the shape. We've already talked about what the shape does, and so that determines the shape of the emitter, which will ultimately determine the shape of the particle system itself. Now, there are lots of other modules to go through here. Velocity over time, obviously, is going to determine uh, the overall velocity of your particle um, as it begins to, um, from birth to death. You can limit that velocity over lifetime, so it can only go so fast once it gets to a certain point. Uh, force over lifetime, so if you want to add something like uh, gravity uh, to that, you can set that over life. Color over lifetime. What this does is it fades from an alpha to where it's completely transparent. It fades in to where it's fully opaque, and then it fades out just like dust does. Um, you can change this from a gradient to be random between two gradients, but normally this is what we'll do. If you want to modify that, you'll need to left-click on the actual swatch, and then you can change it here. So as you can see, this is going to determine the color 
this is going to determine the alpha across the top. So we're going from black, which is transparent, and then we're going to white, which is 255, which is fully opaque. It stays that way until this point, and then it begins to fade out. Okay, But the entire time, it is going to be a white color. Perfect. Now, normally you want that to, ke uh, to keep that white because it allows the start color to change in between that. Okay. Um, going on from here, color by speed. So how fast something is moving can change its color. Uh, this is very helpful for like uh, bullet streaks. Um, they can be kind of a yellow and then as they get faster they turn red and then they fade out to a, another color or something like that. Size over lifetime is really cool as well. We can make particles grow at a certain rate and then begin to fade out, which is what our dust is doing. Left click on that swatch there and you can change the handles in which this is working here. So that's uh, a really nice one to, to work with. Size by speed, same thing except it's over speed instead of the lifetime. Um, so like with smoke, as it grows, um, or as it begins to slow down, you can have it grow larger or something like that. Rotation over lifetime. So right now we're telling it to rotate. So it's going to spin, and it's going to spin at a rate or a velocity between negative 60 and 60. Okay. Uh, rotation by speed, that's based on the particle's uh, speed itself. External forces, so if we want to add gravity uh, to our scene here, um, that, that will allow that to, to work. Um, also wind will affect this, okay, and then the multiplier that goes along with that. If we want our particles to collide, um, we can do that as well, but remember with collisions and particles, that can become very memory intensive, so just be careful. Usually this is done with like sparks or falling rocks or something like that. Sub emitters. Sub emitters are really cool because they allow us to emit particles off of particles. And that's what this allows us to do. So we can tell it to um, emit particles at birth, emit particles whenever they collide, or emit particles whenever they die. Okay, so really cool effects there. Then we can also use a texture sheet animation. So this allows us to have animated textures on each particle. This is really helpful with like fire and creating believable fluid like fire, uh, which is really cool. And then finally we have our renderer. The renderer must be turned on to be able to see it. Uh, the renderer has the options of what is the shape of it. So we have this set to billboard. Um, this is also going to determine um, how it looks in the scene. So billboard is basically going to be facing the camera. You'll be able to see that all the time. This is one of the most commonly used ones. You could also emit a mesh. So if you wanted falling rocks, you would use a mesh. Um, stretched billboard is really uh, useful for sparks because you can take an, an image and then over speed it can actually stretch out. Um, let's go ahead and move down to material. Material is going to be very important. That's how you determine how the particle system is going to look. So you would assign that material here. Um, everything else I'm going to go ahead and just leave. Um, the max particle size is set to 1. We, I don't want to dive too far into each particular one, but I want to give you an idea of what each module does. So that w way if you want to play around with your own, you can do so. So that's a quick rundown of the particle systems. Now one small detail that I forgot to um, add into this is that you can actually add another uh, module to these. So if you hit add, you can actually add in um, a module. Okay, so this has all of the modules turned on. So if I were to right click and remove one of these, um, it would get rid of that and then I could add it back here. Okay. So as of right now, it's actually showing all the modules. If I turn that off, it's only showing the ones that are used. And then I can add one back to it and start to work with it that way. Okay. So now that we have seen these particle systems, seen them in action, you can kind of start to experiment with those. Um, now what I want to do is I want to move on into our next lesson. And in the next lesson, we're going to start working with the player game object. So we're going to start setting that up. We're also going to get into some scripting as well. And we're going to finish out this game from this point.